That should have been the end of the conversation, but the thirst is real, so I kept talking to her. <laughs> a couple minutes after that, she was like, hey, what's your sign? When were you born? What is your sign? And I was like, oh, I was born October 26th, so I'm a Scorpio. She was like, mmm. <laughs> and like most dudes in here, I don't know much or anything about astrology, but I know that that face means that she does not <laughs> Scorpios. anymore. Uh, someone, <laughs> someone definitely messed that up for all of us. Uh, then she started telling me about her dog's astrological sign. That definitely should have been the end of the conversation. <laughs> but the thirst is real, so I kept talking to her. Two hours later, we step out behind the bar. We're smoking a little joint. It's a quiet moment. We're kind of close together. So I went in for a kiss. And she was like, oh, don't you want to get to know me? before you get to know my mouth? I was like, well, not anymore. Uh, <laughs> not out loud, but that's how I felt inside. I was like, oh, maybe I misread these signals. I felt kind of like an asshole. And then she's like, well, let's just hang out later this week. And I was like, okay, I get it. She likes me, but a lot of women, you can't just start making out with a dude willy-nilly, you know? You have a reputation to uphold. You have a checklist. Things have to happen in a certain order. First A, B, and C have to happen then hopefully some D, you know? <laughs> a couple of days later, I took her out for juice in the middle of the day, because I'm a decent human being. A couple of nights later, I got a text from her at one in the morning that said, hey, what are you doing? I'm bored, do you want to come over? And you're thinking the same thing I was thinking. Damn, Ramon, you crushed that juice date. So I was excited, I was like, booty call, this is gonna be dope. <laughs> so I get over to her place, I sit down on the sofa, and then she sat way on the other side of the sofa, so it felt like a really weird job interview I didn't apply for. <laughs> and she started again with the weird question, she's like, hey, do you know any emerging chefs? Because I wanna start a food truck, but I wanna find a chef that wants to start a food truck so we can work together. I was like, that's cool, what kind of food do you cook? She's like, oh, I don't cook. I was like, yeah, you, I guess you don't need to know how to cook for a food truck. She's like, I know, that's what the chef's for. I was like, all right, well, do you have a truck? Do you have money for a truck? She's like, mm-mm. I was like, you sure you don't want to just go eat at a food truck? Go do that. After a couple of minutes of more conversation, I tried to move a little closer to her on the sofa. And she was like, oh, hey, I'm sorry. I don't want you to get the wrong impression. I know it's two o'clock in the morning. I kind of wanted you to just come over and hang out so we can get to know each other and be friends. Is that okay? I was like, yeah, I wish you would have told me that before I came over here. Uh, <laughs> she said, why, what's wrong? I was like, nothing's wrong. It's just miscommunication. Normally, when I get a text to hang out at one in the morning, I just assume it's about to go down, you know? <laughs> She's like, what gives you that impression? I was like, society? Like, I don't, I don't know. The girl got mad at me after I told her that, though. She was like, ugh, I just don't understand why ever since I moved to Cleveland, everyone I meet's just trying to have sex, and no one is trying to build a friendship. I was like, it's probably because you're trying to build your friendships at 2 o'clock in the morning. Um, <laughs> She's like, you know what, maybe you should go. I was like, all right, good luck with your food truck. And I left, <laughs> went home. I put a status up on Facebook. I said, dear ladies, please stop inviting me to your place at 1 a.m. for friendly chats. It's very confusing. <laughs> Keep it in the 1 p.m. range where it belongs. Hugs and disappointment, Ramon Rivas II. <laughs> because the way Facebook works, my mom was the first person to comment on it. Uh, <laughs> My mom's comment, like all mom comments, was way too positive. <laughs> My mom's comment was, you tell them her loss. <laughs> it's like the world doesn't need to know you have confidence in my D. Like that's, <laughs> you know. 
Let's leave some stuff to the moment, you know? <laughs> the weird part is the girl who invited me over at one in the morning liked that status. <laughs> Crazy, right? <laughs> then a couple hours later, she texted me. She was like, hey, I saw your Facebook status. I was like, yeah, I know how Facebook works. <laughs> she was like, I just want to let you know you ruined a good friendship because you're creepy. I was like, I'm not creepy. You're super creepy with your 1 a.m. small business meeting. <laughs> nah, man. She didn't even have a PowerPoint presentation. It was very unprofessional, very unprofessional.